see that there's 44 items for $7. Wow. That's gonna take me an hour just to shop for that alone. In Massachusetts, gig companies are trying to legalize a system that robs workers of basic rights. No minimum wage, paid leave, or ability to unionize in an effort to pad their own pockets. Because the income is so low, it's destroyed my life. Even though the state has some of the strongest labor protections in the country, gig companies skirt the law by treating their workers as contractors instead of employees. Being a first-time independent contractor, the expenses were very heavy. It took almost 50% of everything I made just to pay my expenses. After working an entire week and then calculating my expenses, I would go home with literally maybe three to four hundred dollars after working, uh, you know, 40 to 50 hours a week. The working conditions are not great. As a woman, I've been sexually harassed. Um, I've had to deal with racist passengers. We get no benefits whatsoever. No medical family leave, no vacation time, no sick pay, no fuel reimbursement, no toll reimbursements, pretty much everything. You know, health insurance, nothing. And now those companies are getting ready to spend millions on a ballot initiative that will make this misclassification permanent. There's a new battle brewing over the gig economy here in Massachusetts. If this all sounds familiar, that's because it's happened before. Last year, gig companies spent $210 million getting Proposition 22 passed in California, making it the most expensive ballot initiative in history. Despite their claims that Prop 22 would prevent price increases, every single company that backed the initiative has raised their prices since it passed. At the same time, the gig companies actually decreased their rates for drivers. The minimum wage promised by Prop 22 only applies to what the companies call engaged time, from the time they've accepted a job until they've completed it. This means companies don't pay workers for approximately one third of the time they're on the apps, either waiting for new customers or returning from long distance trips. An effective wage of $10.45 before deducting expenses, resulting in $5.64. Prop 22 passed. Drivers got getting less money and passengers are paying more. So everything you just said that would happen if Prop 22 didn't pass is happening now. Now they're bringing their playbook to Massachusetts. The companies have filed to put their anti-worker bill on the ballot, but they won't be able to pass it without a fight. A group of labor advocates and civil rights groups announced the launch of the Coalition to Protect Workers' Rights. They want to stop Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and other rideshare and delivery companies from rewriting state labor laws and denying drivers' rights guaranteed to all Massachusetts employees. We want to be able to have paid sick leave. We want to be able to have workman's comp. We want to be able to have unemployment insurance. We want to be able to have those basic protections that all other workers in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts are able to have. These companies need to follow the law. They need to respect the worker. They need to pay a living wage. They are trying to Uberize our economy and that's what we are trying to prevent. This isn't just about your Uber driver, your DoorDash driver, the person that picks up your food and delivers your groceries to your house. If they can get away with this in Massachusetts, it'll be coming to a state near you.